This man is my hero, okay? <laughs> this man has got it all. <laughs> he got to commune with the devil. He got to listen to all the best music, hang out with Slayer, summon demons, do like, you know, super special forces, military sh- And he's also going to heaven. I mean, whose existence is better than this guy's, right? Welcome, metalheads, to Heavy Metal Philosophy. I'm your host, your sommelier of extreme metal and blue-collar philosopher, John Barbas. Make sure you stick around to the end of the episode for this week's Riff of the Week. This week, I was thinking, what am I going to talk about this week? And then the new Belfagor album dropped. I had a couple of cool conversations with y'all in the YouTube comments and on my Instagram DMs. And I was thinking, oh, well, maybe I will talk about Christians listening to black metal. I'm a former Christian, and during my Christian years, I wouldn't listen to black metal. And then I've had a devout Catholic as a guest on the podcast, and we talked about metal, but he's got metal that's off limits, particularly black metal. I've had on a chaplain who doesn't mind black metal at all. I I was interested, what is the spectrum? You know, how many people feel, oh, you know, you just separate the art from the artist. It's just the riffs, bro. And then some people are like, no, absolutely not. That's blasphemous. It's against my religion. I can't listen to it. I remember growing up that it, it was considered devil worshiping for me to listen to ACDC. So forget about Behemoth or Belphegor. You know, <laughs> forget about it. So I was interested and I was doing the research and I came across a doozy. And all research stopped. I could not stop looking at this. I've read this over and over and over again, and I can't get over it. I'm going to lose sleep over this. I mean, (laughs) let me try to keep it together, and let me just read you the comment. All right, so on the internet, I found a question and answer site, and this person asks, I'm a Christian. And I listen to black metal and satanic themes. Is that okay? (laughs) And this guy answers, I'm not going to put his name up here because I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to start anything with this guy, but just, I, oh my God, I could not stop. Okay. Let me just, let me just read it to you so that you can hear what I'm talking about. So this guy answers, I used to listen to Judas Priest and Black Sabbath backwards. All the time. Has anybody really listened to Judas Priest and Black Sabbath backwards more than once? There's nothing there. Like, okay. I have met Ozzy Osbourne and all the members of Slayer and Cradle of Filth. I'm 47 years old and since I was 13, I have refused to listen to anything except classical and the darkest, most brutal and evil metal I could find. The only reason I listen to Mayhem is because of the 1991 suicide of vocalist Dead and the 1993 murder of guitarist Euronymous by former member Varg Vikernes of Burzum. Now, before I continue reading, I want to note that he spelled out each one of these persons' actual name. I can't pronounce it. It's Scandinavian, but so... Per Yngwie Olin, that's Dead's name. Nobody in the West calls him by his real name. Only native speakers call him by his real name. We all call him Dead. Nobody calls Euronymous by his real name. It's I can pronounce Euronymous easier than I can pronounce his real name. You know, and if if you're listening from, you know, Norway, I'm sorry. Okay? But I can't pronounce it. And I'm just saying. You will understand what I'm saying about this guy as I read this on. It's just odd to me that he spelled out these people's real names, including the special characters that aren't easy to type on American keyboards. Let me continue reading. The only reason I listen to Burzum is because Varg Vikernes is a murderer who burned down ancient churches. The satanic meaning and diabolical message of the music was all that mattered to me. Many metal musicians I have met have said to me or to someone else in my presence, paraphrased, I don't get to play what I want. I have to deliver the satanic message the music industry wants me to. He goes on here to talk about Kerry King from Slayer talking about how Tom Arise 
a devout Catholic and they just don't talk about it, blah, blah, blah. Let's just skip that part so I can get right to the point and you can see what I'm talking about. Not only have I been listening to metal and black metal all my life, I have also been a practicing Satanist for most of that time until recently. The music and the worship of Satan were not mutually exclusive. One encouraged the other. Asking if, as a Christian, I can or should listen to black metal, to me, is similar to asking if I should stop summoning demons. <laughs> right now, in my bedroom, is a box full of very expensive, very advanced and rare books explaining explicitly how to summon demons, curse people, and how to be a satanic sorcerer. That's a quote, satanic sorcerer. <laughs> I have about $50,000 invested in the contents of that box and it's going into an incinerator as soon as possible. How much money is your soul worth? If I gave it away or threw it away or sold it, I would probably go to hell. A demon followed and terrorized me for six years. Most of my satanic grottos, coven, was murdered. Most of what happened concerning this, nobody would ever believe and some of it is so horrible, if I tell anyone, it will instantly start happening to them too. That's like some Lovecraftian shit right there. Why am I telling you about this? The music you asked about led me into this situation. Hey man, I don't have $50,000 and you said you would go to hell if you sold those books that explain how to summon demons. But as you can see, I'm somewhat of a collector of books and maybe we can come to some sort of arrangement. I give you my word on my honor that I won't summon any demons. They will merely exist in my collection. Just saying. Continuing on. Everything concerned with or connected to the Hollywood movie industry or the music industry is run by hardcore devil worshippers, child molesters, and far worse that nobody will ever believe. Well, first of all, what's worse than child molesters? I, I don't know. But he says far worse that nobody will believe, which again brings me back to Lovecraft. That was his modus operandi. The thing was so scary that you can't even describe it with words. That was Lovecraft's go-to right there. Yeah. That's, that's real handy for the author, right? Like, yo, I just can't even describe it with words. It was so inexplicable. Nice. Continuing on. Many of the musicians are decent, good people who are required by their job to deliver the satanic message mandated by the music industry. The people you never see, the executives and CEOs of the music industry are pedophiles, devil worshippers, and simply some of the worst, most sick and depraved monsters you could ever meet and they decide the message of the music. Why aren't the more popular acts also have satanic themes in their music? Wouldn't it be better to spread the good word of our Lord Satan if the acts that actually have people that listen to them versus the 150 of us or so that listen to black metal? Okay. All right, let's get to some more juicy stuff. All that being said, newer black metal bands like Marduk, Demu Borger, and others are abrasive and purely satanic as possible. Thus, their message is also purely satanic. That checks out. Bands like this make you angry, even though you don't notice it. Other people notice it in you. Bands like Rotting Christ and Black Funeral are as satanic as possible, and so is their message. These satanic Evil themes have a profound effect on the way you think, the relationships you have, and the decisions you make without you even being aware of it. In black magic, 
there is a principle called the command to look based on a subliminal and hypnotic suggestions in the form of a visual image. Maybe I'm guilty of that with my album Art of the Week that I do every weekend. <laughs> black metal uses this principle of black magic and applies it as an auditory message. When you listen to black metal, you are a willing victim of satanic black magic. All of this is to be avoided by those seeking a godly life. So, that socially awkward on the spectrum person that never leaves their bedroom and, and creates that fucking one person black metal album that blows all of us away is also skilled at subliminal messaging and is turning us all into I don't know the devil's tools let's get to some more <laughs> more of this goodness quote you're a smart man you can figure this out each individual band and each individual song has its own message. If that message is satanic, dark, brutal, inhumane, and promotes evil, sin, chaos, and anarchy, it's bad for you, and you need to have the self-control to walk away from it. By the way, that was in all caps. Look, man, I love cocaine. I mean, I really love cocaine. But I have enough common sense to know it will kill you and enough self-control to walk away from it and never touch it again. You don't have to give up all the music you like, but you know when you are listening to a message from Satan and you know it's wrong, again in all caps. I really wish that I really love cocaine was in all caps, but okay. Here we go. If I can walk away from the many polygamous girlfriends the drugs, the music scene, the money, the popularity, power, and influence I had as a satanic magician and everything that came with it and live my life for Christ, anybody can. The true army of the purest form of Satan is already waging war and murdering Christians by hundreds daily in this world at this moment. Their primary goal is to exterminate Israel and America and force as many people to take the mark of Satan in their hand or forehead as they can. They are committed to claiming all of us in the name of their God, Satan. Uh, so again, I just, I feel like it's bad tactics for these people to be using these black metal bands who get a thousand yearly listens on Spotify when they could be co-opting, I don't know, Taylor Swift or somebody, but let's continue. We'll skip the uh, quote of Revelation. It does mention 666. By the way, at the time of this recording, I'm less than 10 subscribers away from 666 subscribers. So if you're listening to this, do your boy a solid. All right. Now it's going to take another turn as if the cocaine thing wasn't enough. I have worked in the Middle East as a military intelligence field agent for over 10 years, and I'm telling you, the beast slash antichrist is here in our world now. Get your soul right with God and keep it that way, brother. What is it about the Middle East that gives you that confirmation? Do we not have enough corroborating evidence about the satanic nature of the world we live in right here in the good old U.S. of A.? Seems awfully unpatriotic. So, there you have it. Advice on what Christians should do when it comes to listening to black metal from a person who's not only a satanic magician, but is also a military intelligence. He's a spook who has... I've, I, <laughs> after I saw this, I had to click on some of his answers to other questions, and he's... He also claims to have summoned demons and used them to assassinate people. So, there you have it. <laughs> if you want to know if it's right or wrong to listen to black metal or not, take it from the guy who kills people with demons. <laughs> Never mind. Y'all, I didn't know that it was going to go this way. I love cocaine. I really love cocaine. <laughs> okay. Cocaine and demons, baby. Uh, all right. 
let me let me try to get my composure and bring this thing to a close. This man is my hero, okay? <laughs> He's got to learn all kinds of magic that are secret from all the rest of us. And he's a military badass. And also, he gets to be forgiven for all of the awful shit he did as a satanic sorcerer and a spy. And now he gets to go to heaven too. So this man has got it all. (laughs) He got to commune with the devil. He got to listen to all the best music. Hang out with Slayer. Summon demons. Do like, you know, super special forces, military shit. And he's also going to heaven. I mean, whose existence is better than this guy's, right? I thought that I had a dilemma on my hand because, you know, I'm not a Christian anymore, but, you know, I still try to be cognizant of what I'm listening to. These days, it's more like, oh, God, is this black metal band a Nazi or not? I never thought, never mind, I think you get the picture. (laughs) Let's do the riff of the week. So since we're talking about black metal and devil worshipers, and if you caught my YouTube exclusive top five best new metal albums of the weekend that I do every weekend on YouTube, then you will know that Belphegor just came out with a new album this past weekend. So it's only fitting that I get the OGs of black metal, use them for the riff of the week, the titular song from the album, The Devils. That's this week's Riff of the Week. Please enjoy. And if you're not listening on YouTube, don't worry. The podcast is on all platforms free every Tuesday. Please, do you all have any occult experience? Can you tell me whether or not you think this guy's a legit satanic sorcerer? Do you think that maybe I could get those books if I message him? Let me know in the comments. Remember, listen to metal, read philosophy. I love you. Thank <laughs> you.